Welcome to the madhouse! <laughs> going on ladies and gentlemen uh we are here on the east versus west as eddie likes to call them podcasts um and we are here to talk about hhn so let's roll that intro all right ladies and gentlemen so i'm back uh eddie's back it's it's been a it's been a while eddie's smiling like a little kid like going to design for the first time <laughs> um we just been grinding though, man. It's just it's just been it's haunt season, you know. So it's like I I've been busy out here in California. I don't know what Eddie's been doing, but I'm assuming he's been busy. I I hope he's been busy. Have you been yeah. busy? Yeah, been been busy traveling for certain haunts like Halloween Horror Nights and doing some of the local haunts and also preparing myself for haunts to come the rest of the season. So yeah, a lot of freaking a lot of work. Yeah, definitely. Today we're going to be talking about Halloween Horror Nights on both coasts. Uh, we're going to give our initial thoughts on the events. Uh, we're going to skim through our um, anticipated list real quick, and then we're going to give an updated list post-anticipation of what we thought of each maze and if any mazes have moved down or up in our lists, which I can tell you um, my number one and my number two did not move, but everything else kind of shifted the way around. So um, I can say that for me. Uh, so... Eddie, how about you kick it off over there with Orlando? What, what would you think of the overall event? Um, so overall, I mean, I think at the end of the day, I'm I'm always going to be really biased. This 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 event holds a special place in my heart. I've been doing it for a really long time. Um, I, I had an amazing time. Uh, stayed on site once again at Universal in Orlando. Um, I was able to do the event three nights. Overall, I, I can't say it let me down. I, I had an amazing time. Brought some new people to enjoy the the event. That's kind of like a tradition that I that I have. I always want to bring somebody new to enjoy the event with me, and the people that I brought loved it just as well. So that that's always a cool thing to experience. That's 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 how I experienced the event again for my first time. I watch other people experience it for their first time. Definitely. Um, yeah, same over here. I, I went with a couple of new people who actually went to the event for the first time last year, uh, and that being my girlfriend and her friends. Um, we, we, we showed up, um, and while we were waiting in line, actually, someone noticed us, so that was fun. Um, snagged a picture with them, and, uh, that was really cool. Uh, and then we got into the event, um, we hit everything, we had a really good time, um, in the words of the Ghostbusters, we came, we saw, and we kicked its ass. Um, but, yeah, we, we really enjoyed it. I really, like I said, this was probably one of the best years of HHN, in my opinion, uh, since 2016. Um, and 2017 was good, too, because they had The Shining. But, like, 2016 was, like, the ultimate um, year for me. And then 2019 came along three years later, and... Uh, this is on par with that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, what we anticipated going into the event and what has changed coming out of the event. So uh, I guess I'll start over here with uh, just a quick skim of what I anticipated going into the event, uh, which, of course, number 10 was Walking Dead, number 9, House of a Thousand Corpses, number 8 was Holidays in Hell, number 7, Curse of Pandora's Box, number 6, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, number 5, Creep Show, number 4, Stranger Things, number three us number two ghostbusters and of course number one was killer clowns uh eddie you're most anticipated going into the event so going into the event i had my number 10 as house of a thousand corpses number nine depths of fear eight nine girls blood pit seven us six graveyard games five ghostbusters four killer clowns three yeti terror of the yukon two stranger things and number one universal monsters all right so we're gonna go through our uh our post um hhn list where we actually uh each of us after the event probably sat down and kind of made this list we thought long and hard before we uh we, we put it down and we made this video that's why this video is taking as long as it did um i've been to the event now as, as of this recording three times um eddie's been three times i believe too right eddie 
Yep, three times. So we've each been three times. That given us more than enough time to actually evaluate each maze um, multiple times just so we can check everything out uh, and see what they had to offer detail-wise, um, story-wise. If it was based off a, a movie or a property, um, what they included in that movie, or if it was an original, uh, how they how they really captured the detail of the originalness of the maze. So um, we're going to go ahead and start it off. Uh, so my number 10 is Stranger Things. What? That's a shock, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, and and usually my number 10 would have been Walking Dead, but Stranger Things was such a disappointment this year at the event, uh, mainly because they really didn't focus – I mean, they focused on season two, which was the thing, I guess, that was the, that, yeah, that was the maze, what it was supposed to be focusing on. Um, but it, it was just such a disappointment. Ton of black walls in there. Uh, they didn't, they didn't capitalize on some of the iconic scenes of season two, which is, of course, you know, one of, one of my favorite scenes in that, that season. And this is spoilers for Stranger Things season two. But um, in season two, we see Eleven close like the portal, and it's like a big major thing at the end. Uh, they didn't show that. They didn't show her with like the other, like I think her name was Eight. Um, she had powers too, and she was an experiment. They didn't show any of that. Uh, in our maze, they mostly just focused on Will throughout the entire maze, which was, you know, and I get that. That was what season two was about, was Will trying to recover to what happened in season one. And, you know, you're focusing on, usually with Stranger Things, you're focusing on multiple storylines, but they all intertwine into one. Uh, Will was just one of the one of the couple storylines, and then you had, of course, Dustin and Steve who were doing their own thing. Uh, you had Eleven doing her own thing, trying to get back to um, uh, Mike. Uh, you had Mike and the gang doing their own thing, trying to help Will out. Um, Hopper and um, Will's mom doing their own thing. So, and they all intertwine at the end. But nonetheless, this maze mostly just focused on Will a lot. Um, now a couple changes, and this is something that I, at least over here in Hollywood they do, they they because they they pay attention to fans, they pay attention to details, uh, they, they 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 like to improve stuff as it goes on, the event goes on. So if something wasn't there opening night, they improve it for the next week or the next week or the next week. Um, yeah. Something that I saw improvement wise when I went on Sunday was uh, they had a guy playing Steve this time around, which was cool. I didn't see a Steve uh, opening night, so that was awesome. And they utilized a uh, David Harbour character uh, getting caught up with all the vines and stuff, which I thought was really cool. But, yeah, Stranger Things for me was number 10. Um, they had, like, one, maybe two good scenes in there, but uh, I was I was completely jealous when I watched the Orlando one. Let's just say that. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty surprised that's your number 10 because um, Stranger Things is nowhere near my number 10. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. Okay. Um, my number 10... Uh, as it stands, um, is Depths of Fear. Wow. So, yeah. I, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of great things about this particular house. One thing I could tell you, though, is every single place in my lineup has changed. I was just looking at it. Not one remained in the same place, okay. um, which, which means some that were last surprised me. Um like the one that was last is no longer last. Mm -hmm. We know who that is. We know who that um, is. Yep. But uh, Depths of Fear was number nine and went back a step to number 10. So I, I didn't have too high of expectations for it. It was pretty good. But I have to say, because I didn't get to experience this house all three times that I was there, I think the reason why I don't like it, and I've seen so many good reviews about it, um, is because I experienced a cast change mm -hmm. when I went through it. So I just didn't get a good run through the, the house. Um, I also thought that the, for me in particular, the, um, the actual like costumes for the monsters were a little too cartoonish. Okay. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure by now you've probably seen some of the pictures that I've leaked online of the, the actors like going through the cast change, walking outside of the house. And it, it just looks like a like a big piranha or like a an anglerfish. All right. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it just it it had a cool effect. I enjoyed the house, but it didn't have many scares because there was. It, it seemed like there was a lot of empty space, and at the end of the day, it just it, it just moved back one step. So it only got a little bit worse than what I thought it'd be, but it was still good. Definitely. Um. 
Yeah, that's kind of a disappointment because I know that was, uh, you know, that's an original, and usually Orlando kills it in the originals. But yeah, you may have, it, it just may have been the, what ruined it for you was you went through a lot of character changes, and uh, that usually ruins it for a scare, you know. So I, yeah. I, I could see that. Um, number nine for me, of course, is going to go to The Walking Dead. Um, we walk through it. Um, same old stuff. Nothing new. Nothing fancy. Um, I, you know. Then. That's such a, that's such a shame. You put Stranger Things behind The Walking Dead. <laughs> At least Walking Dead had way more detail than freaking Stranger Things did. But more zombies than ever. Yeah, um, <laughs> and that that fact was proven right when we walked through over to the uh, maze and outside they had a little photo op uh, with like you know a bunch of mannequin zombies and then there was two real ones. So like that fact was proven to to be right. Um, but of course, this is a maze at the event that. For the for most of the night, it's going to be the most twenty minute wait, um, and that's because people know to utilize this one. It's a year round thing, and um, yeah. But yeah, Walking Dead, like I said, same old shit, nothing changed, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just my number nine, just because the attention to detail was way better than Stranger Things. But you know what? I, I do got to say this, kind of like a side note. The Walking Dead had an amazing history at Halloween Horror Nights, and some of the most amazing houses I've ever been through yeah. are the Walking Dead houses. Definitely. No, I agree. I agree 100% because when they first brought The Walking Dead, it was such a big phenomenon on TV at the moment. Uh, they brought it back in 2012, at least at, over here in Hollywood, and I believe they did the same thing in Orlando. Um, and uh, from there, they just the mazes got bigger. They got better. They continued to do... Um, stuff that people wanted to see season after season, and uh, they worked closely with Greg Nicotero, who is was an executive producer of uh, The Walking Dead. He was also uh, responsible for a lot of the makeup and stuff. And you know, the current guy who's doing the Creep Show series, um, and I think year after year they just had that opportunity of using the actual sculpts from the show. Uh, <laughs> you know, get a lot of creator input. Uh, and and just make a, bring to life those iconic scenes. Yeah, uh, so. walking through, through Terminus was amazing. Yeah, but once again, that's we're we're getting sidetracked there. But um, all right, cool. Did you say everything that you needed to? Yeah, about, uh, Walking Dead's okay. done for me. <laughs> all right, cool. So my number nine, and I gotta say this: from nine on, I enjoyed them all exponentially. So this list. From nine on is great. So it's just hard to put them in order from this point on. So this isn't number nine because I didn't like it. This is number nine because unfortunately there was too many good houses to to put put to it any with. Yeah. yeah. So number nine was Nightingales, Blood Blood Pit. Wow. Number nine was Nightingales? Yes. Yeah. But I got scared shitless. There's a lion in here, like, and it's being like held by like a chain or something like that in one of the parts. That freaking I, I froze in place like a, a deer in headlights. <laughs> um, the the costumes were really cool. Um, they were different than the original Nightingale costumes that I researched because I, I I didn't get to experience the original Nightingales. At least I don't remember experiencing it. Um, and the the actual mask looked completely different. So. Um, it, it had a real cool feel to it, real dark, ominous type of like walkthrough, yeah. uh, with some cool scenes. But the one that stuck out to me the most was that lion. That lion was caught me completely off guard mm -hmm. and I froze in place when that puppet came out. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah. Nightingale's blood pit is my number nine, but not because it wasn't good. It's just because there's so many good houses this year. That's awesome. That's uh, but yeah, I heard a lot of good things about that. Even when Awkward Arsic went down there to visit the event, he said that the Nightingales was such a good maze, so bloody. It really brought the true like spirit of haunted houses like kind of back to life and stuff, which I really thought was a cool compliment. And to hear that makes me want to go through it. So I uh, I applaud the people at uh, Orlando's creative team for that maze. Yeah, that was um, bloody as hell. That's cool, man. Number <laughs> eight for me. House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, and that is due to the fact that, uh, like I said in previous East vs. West episodes, uh, 2010 and 2011, it was at the event, the first year I ever went to the event, 2011. Uh, and it was in 3D. Um, my only complaint about this, it, it felt like it was a rushed maze built together. 
um, because there's a lot of black walls. Um, and I think in just the location in general it was, uh, they didn't really get to cover as much as they did in the 2011 version. Um, of course, when we walk in, you go through the, uh, the museum, um, and then you make your way to the Firefly house. You see a little bit of the iconic scenes there, and then you make your way into the caves, and then uh, you see Dr. Satan, and then that's about it. Um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, there was more scenes I would love to have seen. Uh, like I said, 2011's maze was flawless. There was so much detail in that one. And, uh, you know, I mean, I go through it now because, one, I just, when I, when I went when I went the second time, I had just watched Three from Hell. So I was too pumped, and I wanted to go through it. Um, I haven't been through it since, but I want to go through it again, only just in, in, the, in the respect and, and, you know, tribute to uh, Sid Haig, who actually, unfortunately, passed away earlier in the month. Um, so I would love to go through just to kind of pay tribute to him and just kind of from then on for the rest of the event, just the reason why I go through this maze is to pay tribute to him. Um, just because Captain Spoolian is probably one of the greatest horror icons, um, in like B movie horror. It's, it's that, that real. So yeah, number eight for me, House of Thousand Corpses. Did you see the, the one guy who posted pictures online? He took like a, a mini Captain Spaulding through all of Halloween Horror Nights and mm -hmm. took pictures like in different locations. With the mini Captain Spaulding. I haven't seen that. That sounds funny, though. Yeah, it was like in tribute of Sid Haig. But, um, yeah, rest in peace, man. That That's crazy what happened to him. Yeah. Um, but, funny enough, we share a number eight. Damn, I can't believe you even put it that high on your list. I know. I know. I when I, I didn't When I found out it. it wasn't number nine, I was like, oh, man, it's even higher. I know. I know. I, I, it's a doozy. It's a doozy. What can I say? Um, House of a Thousand Corpses, I would have to say, let me really think about this. Hold on. Best facade this year. Yeah, you guys had a really good facade. I, I really dug that. Best facade. It was the entrance of the of the museum. The roadside and attraction, yeah. To the T and to the point that they actually had the, the, the phone booth uh, for Bill and Ted out front. So... Um, it's the actual phone booth that's used at the Bill and Ted show. So it, it was a cool little callback, which I think is a sign of what's to come next year. Hopefully. but Yeah, hopefully. But um, the house was good so much so that I even thought the – and I think I told you this jokingly, but I really believe it. I thought that the, the makeup in this house was better than the makeup in the actual movie. Yeah, you've told me that many times. Yeah, I, I and I honestly believe that. Like, I thought the makeup was done much better. Um, <clears throat> did you see the what was it the um, the the merman or whatever it was? They didn't have that in our maze, and I was a little mad about that. Well, so we did, and but from from what you said, the way that you explained it, you go through through the museum, you go through through the Firefly uh, House. Firefly House, and then you see Doctor Satan in, in the in and the caves underground. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that that's basically the same way that ours went. But mm -hmm. I, I thought the flow was pretty cool. Like I, I, I had recently rewatched the movie, and you know I wasn't too pleased with it. But being able to like walk through the through the house and like follow the movie to the T was pretty cool, and it, it was a terrifying house. Like it was pretty scary. Um, you know, the it was bloody. There was the the scene with the scalp getting ripped off was there, um, so yeah, a lot of what I wanted to be there was there, and I I actually could say I probably enjoyed the house better than I did the movie. There you go. It's a good. I like the movie. It's a good horror flick. <laughs> um, number seven for me, and this was uh, this was at number five. It went down two spots, and you know I was a little disappointed, but. When I went through it again on Sunday, it was actually a lot better because I saw more stuff that I didn't get to see the first time around, and that is going to go to Creep Show. Um, I was very much looking forward to this maze. Greg Nicotero, like I said, came back to do the Shutter series, um, and when the way John uh, Murdy kind of hyped it up at um, Midsummer Scream, you know, you, you, we we were going to see a lot of good stuff, which we did. Don't get me wrong; there was a lot of good scenes in there, and the transitions from each scene weren't too bad. 
because what utilized the black walls was, of course, the comic book covers that you see in Creepshow uh, that are in the movie, the show, that it, this this whole universe is based around. It's supposed to be like a comic book, um, which I thought was really cool. So you combine two of my favorite things. You combine horror and comics together. It's it's really cool. But nonetheless, Creepshow had a lot of good scenes, but I was a little disappointed. Like I said, the opening night that I went, it got a lot better the second time around I went through it. But... Um, yeah, man, there's a, there a lot more stuff I would have liked to have seen in, like, the scenes and stuff like that. But, you know, they can only do so much with the, such little space that they have. So, uh, you know, I, I try not to complain about it too much because I, I know how hard it is and how much work goes into these events. So, Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I that's a house that I thought was pretty cool. I, I didn't get to experience it at my event, unfortunately. My number seven, though goes to another original, which is Graveyard Games. Beautiful house. Um, and true to the Halloween October feel, probably the truest out of all the houses, um, you, you get this beautiful like uh, facade when you're walking in. Walking through the graveyard was amazing. Um, you get some really good scares as you walk through. The only thing that I thought could have been better, or maybe not I thought could have been better, but I was hoping would be better, was the interactiveness with the the uh, messenger. Okay. I thought it would be a lot more like, you know, I could type in whatever type of thing, but it wasn't. It was more like, you know, there there's you you enter to start talking with them, and then it becomes like a, you know, you have options on the questions and options on the on the uh, the whether or not you want to keep the conversation going, um, it was pretty cool and detailed as far as like how much they tell you and how long it goes. It's not like a a simple like you just go on there and like in within like a minute you have the whole entire story. Um, it definitely like keeps you entertained for like a long line if you're in one. Um, but it was like a you know choose A choose B type of thing. It wasn't like type in what you want to what you want to say. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I kind of expected that going into hearing about this maze, which I, I knew they were going to have options to um, kind of choose your answers. Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's awesome, the interactiveness, and you get to kind of see how the story plays out. But ultimately, I mean, you, you got to really think about it. There's, like, so many people that go to that event, and there's so many people that want to do the same thing you want to do. So they have to utilize, okay, there can only be a specific number of answers that we can give out to people. And, yeah, that's that. <laughs> yeah. No, I I get it in hindsight, but I guess you you hope for better. Definitely. Um, number six for me, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Um, a great sequel to Universal Monsters last year, and um, it was such a good maze. I don't think it was as good as Universal Monsters because like, that maze was flawless in my opinion, but uh, it was still a very good sequel, and I would love to see more of the Universal Monsters saga at the event in the next coming years. Uh, maybe a Universal Monsters 2 would be really cool. Uh, but Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman was really cool. You get to walk in. You got music by Slash playing original music he all uh, made up for the maze. You get to walk in. You see Frankenstein turning into – or not Frankenstein. No, the Wolfman turning into the Wolfman and this gypsy-type camp. And as you're walking through, you're, you know, you're seeing the Wolfman kind of run around and hide in places. And you're seeing his shadows and stuff. And then at one point you go into this like bar-type area where you know, you know, the guy he's got this shotgun, he's telling the wolfman to come out, he comes out and pops at you, then as you're walking more, you see Frankenstein. Uh, eventually you end up in the graveyard, um, where you see it, where you kind of it kind of picks up where it left off last year, where you went through this graveyard, you went through the Frankenstein tomb, and of course they got iconic mashups uh, throughout the maze of Wolfman and uh, Frankenstein's monster, which I thought was really cool. Um, I, I would say the best scene in the whole maze, though, is when you go into Dr. Frankenstein's lab, and it's supposed to be um, post-Universal Monsters, where Frankenstein blew up the lab, um, and you got Frankenstein's monster and, you know, Wolfman, they're laying on the on the, the two tables, and you gotta walk in between them, and, you know, they pop up at you, but they're trying to fight, which I thought was really cool, and then you go in the back, and you see Igor, um, he's all fucked up, and then you see the bride, who she's all burned to crisp uh, from the explosion, but she's still moving around, and I really thought this was such a, a great maze, and like I said, I would love to see more of the Universal Monster Legacy continue at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, I hope they don't stop with this. 
in my opinion, Universal uh, Studios uh, Hollywood has a tendency of when they make a sequel to a maze, it's usually not as good. Um, example being, of course, um, when they did the Insidious, not the second time around, but the third time around, wasn't too good. When they did, of course, Stranger Things 2, wasn't good. Um, there's a couple other mazes I can't think of at the top of my head right now, but those are the two that like kind of float the boat as uh, an example. Uh, but this one was an amazing sequel, and I would, like I said, love to see more of Universal Monsters in the future. Well, hopefully when they bring something back for a third time, it's not as bad. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> and the, you and know the, Stranger and, Things next year, right? Well, I mean, I hope they really utilize more stuff in Stranger Things. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, with Universal Monsters, it's iconic because you can do different monsters every year and just take it from different versions of Dracula, take it from different versions. We haven't even seen the creature yet, so they can do the creature. Uh, you can get into even later uh, Universal Monsters or horror icons, which I thought would be cool. How, how dope would it be if they told us right now, the next five years you're going to get one house and this is the order you got dracula next year you got frankenstein the following year you got the wolfman the following the following year you got the invisible man the year after that you got creature the year after that and like we know exactly which houses are coming but we have no idea what they're going to be like that'd be cool that'd be pretty cool i'd be like i said i love the universal monsters um if you guys watch my normal videos, you know on my set, Frankenstein is the face of the set. So uh, That'd be a commitment to make and also some pressure on them to make sure they deliver each and every year on this house So since we know that they're coming. I mean, look at Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Look at Universal Monsters. They've both had music by Slash in Hollywood, and um, it, it, it's such an iconic maze. They're such iconic properties. Love them or hate them, you know who they are. Um because they're they're a staple in horror history and they're a staple in Universal Studios. Without they paid the studio, yeah, without yeah, without the Universal monsters, their studio wouldn't be what it is today. They're technically not even monsters; they're more superheroes than anything else. I would say just call them icons, dude, because they're so iconic. Like everyone knows who everyone knows who Frankenstein's monster is. Everyone knows who the Wolfman is. Everybody knows who Dracula is. You know, and. You know, they're just such a big staple to the event, to Universal Studios in general, that, you know, I don't think they would disappoint because those are like their babies. Yeah. All right. So my number six, you're going to get mad. <laughs> Killer Clowns from damn Outer Space. Damn it, Eddie. Damn it. God damn it. Get off my lawn. <laughs> All right. That's the end of the video. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> so now, once again, I told you from nine on, this list is great. So three later, we got Killer Clowns, which means it's pretty good. Um, as a walkthrough, it was amazing. Extremely scenic. The scenes, I know you've seen it. I know you've seen the walkthroughs for Orlando. Um, it was the only house that had black walls. So for the first time ever, I experienced Hollywood. Hollyweed. <laughs> but, um, I, I liked it a lot. I just didn't, there wasn't a scare in sight. Not one thing scared me. Um, uh, Clownzilla was amazing. I got to walk right under him. Under is nuts, dude. You got some Clownzilla nuts in your face. Yeah. It hit me right here. Yeah, Boom. I bet it did. <laughs> Made a loud clapping sound, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, the I, I really like this house. It just it wasn't scary. Was the only thing I could say about it. Negative. Everything else was extremely cool to look at. It was like walking through the movie, seeing the, um, the like uh, hand puppets and whatnot was really cool. Um, and it, it did feel like walking through the tent. So a lot of what I, what I was asking from it was great. Um, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it, it, it didn't let me down. I don't think, uh, it just wasn't scary. It's the only thing. Definitely. Um, I felt like a little kid going through that maze and we'll get to that when I announce what number it is, which could, should come to no shocker to anybody. So, um, number five, number negative three. Number negative three. <laughs> Number five for me is going to be Holidays in Hell. This was an original maze based off a of scare zone last year and music by figure. Now, this one went up 
Uh, three slots. One, two, th four slots. Three slots. Um, four slots. I don't know. I can't do math. I'm half tired right now. But nonetheless, uh, Holidays in Hell was really good. Um, there was like not very many black walls in this one. Like they really utilized each and every part of the maze. The only black walls you had was when they transitioned to, to show the postcard of the next holiday, which I thought. You know, that was necessary because you wanted to see what holiday you were going into next. But the what really made this maze really good was, of course, the soundtrack um, made by both Figure and John Murdy himself. And when I say John Murdy, he did a lot of the lyrics for uh, some of the songs in this, in this maze. And, uh, you know, Figure did all the beats and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, I, I find myself every time going through this maze just dancing through it because it's such a great maze, such great music. Um, the holidays themselves are amazing they really stepped it up this year um you know with and you know you got to see different holidays you got to go to different parts of the world which i thought was really cool so yeah i loved holidays from hell i think i love it too if you love it i love it <laughs> <laughs> all right my number five was yeti terra of the yukon or you can, depending on who you're speaking to. Um, That's cold. But, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Pun, well, the, pun intended. Yeah, it was a cold haunted house. It's that's a Yeti. Um, but you got to forgive Lash. You know, it's like his 13th language. I don't know. But um, every time it's a different number. It goes from like 9 to 13 to 27 back to 13. <laughs> yeah, we'll eventually like get to infinity. But this one was... As good as I expected it to be. Um, actually, if I look back at... No, actually, it's not as good as I expected it to be. It's I, I expected it to be number three, and it ended up being number five. But I enjoyed it greatly. Um, the the whole Yukon, um, when you're walking through it, and the, all the snow, it was great. The the actual like costumes were pretty impressive. The guys were huge. Um I, I had nothing negative to say about this house at all. From this point on, the list is really, I just had to put them in order. And some were just edging the other. Um, but Yeti Terra the Yukon, number five, was a great experience. I wish I could go back to Orlando right now, but unfortunately, I don't live that close. Definitely. Um, number four, Jordan Pills Us. Um, this was number three on the list, so it went down just one slot. Um, it was a great maze, fantastic scenery. Uh, they got some, a lot of the greatest scares in there. Uh, the people playing the characters were spot on. They were great. Um, my only problem with it, um, and this is because when I, when I first watched the maze walkthrough, it was through an Orlando walkthrough. Uh, my only issue with the maze was, of course, when they do the scare of the other family uh, with the guy, you know, who does the little hair thing. Um, when he comes out, they do the, the DJ spin of freaking fuck the police. Um, and I would have loved to, like, have that little nod just to get excited. Um, but that was my only problem with it. I mean, everything else, it was it was really good really put to detail and it looks like this was the maze that they really put a lot of attention to this year um with killer clowns you know what i mean and uh, pandora's box um and yeah i just i really enjoyed going through the um the little maze from the actual movie and then you know going through the houses going through of course the underground tunnel system um <laughs> We, we had an ongoing joke here on the Knights of Horror. Instead of black walls this year, we wanted white walls. And we saw a lot of white walls in this maze, which I thought was hilarious. So, yeah, us for me was number four. Very nice. My number four was a house that I enjoyed greatly. But walk, watching the walkthroughs, I do think that you guys had a bit of a better uh, walkthrough than we did, which was Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. Um, Ghostbusters was great. And I actually had a friend that was working at, at Ghostbusters when I walked through it, which was really cool to experience. I, it's the first scare actor that I know. Um, well, did you, uh, did you say hi to her? Yeah, I waved at her and she stayed in, in, uh, 
and character. She and probably she was playing one of the major roles. I forgot. I forgot the name of the character. You talking about? Well, she did she play? Um, did she play the secretary? Yes. Okay. What's her name? I don't know her name, but she's. We'll call her the secretary because that's yeah. with her title. Yes. Um. So. <clears throat> That scene, I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure if I remember seeing that scene in your house. We had in the very beginning, uh, the same scene where she picks up the phone and goes, "We got one." Yeah. And then in the yeah, background, yeah. well, in ours at least, in the background, we had Ghostbusters actually coming out the doors, like if they caught, they just came back from a ghost bust. And when she says, "We got one," like they get all excited and they leave the other side of the door, which I thought was really cool. Is her name like Janine or something like that? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, but the house was amazing. The the way that they they like um, used like the uh, the special effects yeah to, to, like the proton blasters and all that shit that they that they have in the movie yeah. was great. Um, the only thing that that I thought was gonna be more massive was the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and that's why I give you guys the edge on on our. On our house compared to yours, yeah. your Stay Puff Marshmallow Man looked much better, and he was much more exposed than ours was. Ours was just kind of like he was sitting like this behind a wall, like moving his eyes left to left. I saw that, and I was like, "What the hell is that?" And like yours was actually like, "Ah!" You saw from like torso up, yeah, yeah, which mm. was upsetting because I, I thought the only way this this would be like awesome with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Well, the only way that he would be even worth using was if you made him massive. Yeah. But um, uh, aside from that, it was a really freaking cool walkthrough. Yeah, that's that was a, a good maze. And when we get to my part of where I put that, uh, I'll talk a little bit about more of uh, my likes and disappointments of that maze. So, Number three, and this changed because of last night. Literally, this is why this changed. I literally changed this maze, moved it up. Switched it with us because last night's walkthrough was probably the best walkthrough I had of this maze so far, and that is the Curse of Pandora's Box. This was another original that came to the event um, this year, and I had such a great time going through it uh, opening night, but Sunday night, it was so much better. So I don't know if you've seen a walkthrough on it yet, but there is one part in the maze in the very beginning. If you press like a hidden button, it opens a massive door, and it's like a secret entrance into the maze. Um... It takes you off the normal route and you go through a quick regular route. It's like, it's nothing major, but it just it's cool to walk through and cool to look at when the giant door is just opening up, and that's supposed to be the opening of Pandora's box, which is really really cool. Um, but this maze was colorful. Um, it, it had a lot of great uh, scares in it, a lot of great uh, characters in it, um, and I really just enjoyed myself. Uh, you know, if you if you if you're familiar with the Greek mythology of Pandora's box, um, you're gonna of course love this maze. If you're just familiar with Greek mythology in general, uh, you'll love this maze. Um, but I had such an amazing time, and uh, that was actually the maze that tied it one to one in the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge, which is out now on my channel. <laughs> a quick plug right there. That was a shameless plug. Shameless. <laughs> um, my numero three is. Stranger Things. Now, let me remind everybody. I, 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 mean, I know I already talked about my three. We're in the top three now. <laughs> yes, we are in the top three. There we go. And my number three is Stranger Things. This maze, although last year was in my top two, yeah, still being in the top three is pretty impressive, at least given how much I like all the houses on this list, basically. Um, Stranger Things, I thought was great. And when I first walked through it, I was kind of preparing myself for disappointment when I started seeing so much of season two. But once it transitioned into season three, Jesus. You had the mall scene. That's what I really yeah. made me jealous. Dude, and the freaking... Mind flare. Uh, what? The mind flare. Yeah, the mind flare was amazing. Yeah. They had the one scene from season two where they're in their cabin and the mind flare is attacking the cabin. That's season three. Oh, is that season three? That's probably okay. season three. Dude, that scene was amazing. And it's actually like mechanics. Like it's actually like moving. It's not just like a stationary, like breaking through the roof. No, yeah. like it's coming through the freaking roof and you're walking through the fucking cabin. It was, ooh, I cursed for the first time, I think, on the podcast. 
Um, this this house was stunning, and it had some good scares too. The the demogorgons, or the not the demogorgons, the dem dogs. Yeah, they got me. Um, and just in general, the whole entire walkthrough was pretty consistent with the with the story. Um, but Starport Mall, walking through Starport Mall, that last like scene where you walk through where the the actual mind flare is like sitting there. Yeah. He's actually moving too. He's not standing still. That's the crazy part about it. Um, I I love this house. Yeah, I love it, it. It looked Actually, amazing. It's so far down in your list. Well, I mean, <clears throat> if you watch the walkthrough, you know why. I got I got to go back and watch it. Um, don't watch any of mine. I don't got a good lighting one. Watch one with good light. Sharp Productions. Look up his. Gotcha. Um, number two, Ghostbusters. Now Ghostbusters. Like um, like Eddie said, it was a great maze, um, at least on this coast it was. What really makes it cool is every year at Horror Nights, they do this thing where they pick a certain maze, and if you give the character that interacts with the people in line a certain passcode, they give you some special gift. Prior years, I've gotten a, a Purge pamphlet for the Staten Island experience uh, experiment for the first Purge. I also got a Purge hat. Um, I've gotten invitations to James Franco's house party, which was, of course, for This is the End. Um, they've done insidious uh, business cards. But this year, uh, I got two of these, and I might go back for some more, hopefully. But this year, they utilized the Ghostbusters maze, and they gave out this little boy right here. It is uh, Louis Tully, who is the um, certified public accountant. And on the bottom it says, who does your taxes with the address and phone numbers. Um, this was really cool. And if you guys know who Lewis is, he's the one um, searching for uh, the gatekeeper or the key master. I forgot which one. I think he's the I think he's the key master in there. So, yeah, he's the one going crazy throughout the entire movie. Um, and he's out there giving out business cards. Um, I've played it off so great when uh, – you know, it comes down to the past where, like, one of them was one of the characters' names, and I would play it off. So, like, yeah, my friend so-and-so. And he'd be like, oh, that's a good story. And he just hands me a business card. Uh, Sunday was actually nice doggy. So I played it off like, yeah, my friend had this dog, and I bend over, and I was like, nice dog. And he goes, that's a great story. And he just handed me a card, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so I really I really enjoyed Ghostbusters, though, nonetheless. Uh, some of the most iconic ghosts were in there. There was one scene in particular that I loved where um, it was all dark, and they had black lights on the, on the characters. And um, two people were actual scare actors, and they, like, there was one where just it looked like a head was floating. The other one where it just looked like a torso was floating. So they did a really amazing job on those effects. Slimer looked good. Um, they had, of course, my favorite scene in there where Bill Murray walks out of the elevator and he goes, uh, uh, we came, we saw, and we kicked its ass. And every time I see that scare actor, I literally reply the entire lines, and the scare actor just laughs and just has a good time because he knows people are fans of this. Um, another great scene in that uh, maze was when um, Dan Aykroyd's character, you know, sees Slimer, and then he activates his thing, and he, you know, gets it with the blaster, and they kind of did a really amazing effect with that, which I thought was cool. Um, Stay Puff was good. Uh, the librarian scene was pretty good. Um, this this maze was just really good. It really um, it stayed at my number two. I knew this was going to be one of the underdogs of the event. Um, every time I go to the event, it's one of the it's one of the top three mazes that's always packed. So uh, yeah, this 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 was such a good maze, and um, yeah, I I hope they I hope. And, and I'm gonna bite my tongue saying this, but I hope they do Ghostbusters two in the future. And hopefully not mess it up. <laughs> yeah, no, Ghostbusters is great. Um, and yeah, and the the special effects when they're like blasting their guns was was amazing. Oh, let me get to it real quick before we go. My only issue with that maze was the Stay Puft Marshmallow scene. All four of the Ghostbusters were just mannequins, and I would have loved it at least if one or two of them were real and they actually looked at you like we're gonna do this right now and. That was my only issue with the maze, but everything else was good. Yeah, sometimes static figures kind of mess things up when they're too visible. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. My number two, and this was this was very difficult. And once we get to my number one, I'll tell you why my number one edged out number two. But number two, which I really wanted to make number one, is Universal Monsters. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. Universal Monsters was impeccable. I can't say a negative thing uh, about it. When walking through it, the first scene that you walk through is actually from uh, Creature from the the Black Lagoon. Mm -hmm. And it is ridiculous the way that they set it up. Like at first, I kind of, it took me a second to kind of notice what they were doing with it. And I noticed there was these things hanging, like kind of like kelp, right? And I look up and there's a boat. So the scene was as if you were walking underneath water. That's cool. In the actual lagoon, which was freaking sick. As soon as I noticed it, I started looking around and I'm like, wow, that's freaking amazing. Pretty cool. Um, and, and then just like everybody else that was there, the, the, en- the entry facade was amazing. They had the, the statues for, for all the, yeah, I, I saw those monsters. and I wanted, I wanted them all for my collection. Yeah. They, they were amazing. Um, every experience, um, the, what's it called? The Wolfman was amazing. Um, Frankenstein's monster was another highlight, but I, I think who got the most exposure was probably the Wolfman. Um, they also had, um, I, I, I think, if I remember correctly, it was, uh, what's it called? Quasimodo, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. He was there. Um, the Bride of Frankenstein. Mummy Dracula. Yeah. It, it was just, yeah, Dracula. Oh, I forgot about that. Now, now that How you do just you forget about one of the most iconic Universal monsters of all time. No, no, I just forgot his scene. I just forgot his scene. I didn't forget him. You know, me and him hang out on a regular basis. What oh, are you talking? Yeah. Um, yeah, this was a house for the ages. I wish I could walk through this thing a million times. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that it came. It was it was a house that I was jealous that you guys got last year. Yeah. And honestly, it should be number one this year. But when we get to number one, I'll, I'll tell you why number one got number. Um. Yeah, dude. I I loved Universal Monsters last year, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you guys got to experience it this year. Number one, by process of elimination, and no surprise if you guys watch the channel. Plus, oh, dude, you fucking got it. <laughs> Killer clowns from <laughs> outer space. Um, I knew this was gonna be my number one going in. It was my number one coming out. Um, what made opening night better for me was after, uh, you know, it was all said and done. Uh, John Mazzari hit me up and he was like, "Hey, you know, I just got done with Santa Mas Palooza. You want to meet up? What's going on?" I was like, "Yeah, let's meet up at the City Walk." And we talked for like two hours. Um, the first hour and a half was, of course, about killer clowns and the maze. Um, and then like the last thirty minutes was about like a couple of other things, like Tunes of Terror and stuff like that. So. Um, it, it was such an amazing time, and I, I just had an oh god, it was like a playground in there, man. Uh, just, you know, growing up watching this movie, you want to go inside the, you want to go inside the ship, and you want to check it out for yourself. You know, in a million, you never thought in a million years you'd be able to do it, and Universal Studios seriously brought that childhood to life. I felt like a little kid going through the mazes. I was not scared at all uh, of all the clowns just because I have a, such a high respect for all the clowns. Um, and I love each and every clown of how unique they are. You know, you got Fatso, you got Slim, you got Shorty. Um, th- there's so many iconic clowns that come out. And, you know, what's what's really cool about the maze, at least over here in, in Hollywood, and, and this is just based off experiences that I've had in the maze, but... Like every time I'd say hi to a clown, or every time I throw him up the like the devil horns, or every time I just interacted with the clown, you can tell the person under the mask is just as big as a fan as you are, and they would literally like wave back or give me devil horns back, which I thought was so fucking cool. You know, I every time I go in, I get excited. There's like, I think Sunday was probably the best walkthrough I've ever been into that maze, which was of course. You know, I I hadn't seen the clown with the balloon dog, and I finally got to see a, the clown with the balloon dog. I I have not, I mean, I haven't got a good um, view of, of course, the clown doing the dinosaur um, shadow show, which I thought was amazing. Um, and it, you know, just walking through it, it it just brings the movie to life. And like I said, I love just interacting with the clowns every time i call for shorty at the end of the maze he comes out and i love it and he like waves at me and he's just excited to be working there um 
and you know uh, I just the words can't express how much I love this movie and how much I love this maze and I hope it it's such a big thing uh, like they did with AVP one year that they bring it back for an encore presentation and at that point I, I, I would hope and wish they put it into a um, uh, a soundstage because then they can actually utilize a giant fucking clownzilla this time around so yeah yeah it's a good freaking maze, and the the costumes of the clowns are amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so this brings us to my number one. Yep, yep, bring it home. And my number one, through process of elimination, I gave Universal Monsters two slots. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I could talk about it more. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. And... and this guy was really a come from behind winner. Just to give you a, an idea, in my original hype list, it was my number seven. Wow. And now it is my number one. And that is us, Jordan Peele's us. The man who was talking shit about this maze when it came. Yeah. And now you, he you know, loves it. I I I got some great scares. They got their their timing, their acting was on point which is something that i value a lot yeah um from a scare actor timing is everything you know i one thing i can't stand is a scare actor that just screams ah like you know useless Mm -hmm. you're useless i should backhand you okay Mm -hmm. that (laughs) you know somebody who uses the proper timing to catch you off guard is somebody who knows what they're doing and that's what the actors in us knew how to do. The scenes were freaking amazing. Walking through the house and the 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 scene in, in our maze when you're walking through the house, the front door is open and you see the tethered family standing outside in the dark ominously with like the light kind of hitting them. Yeah. Um that that I, I got chills seeing that walking through there. And then going down where the tethered live, um, watching her do her little dance with the scissors. Yeah, man, this this house hit on all different levels. And although, like I said, I I would love to make um, Universal Monsters number one. I gotta edge these guys out just by giving them the props that they came from seven. Yeah, to number one, or they would have been number two, but still. In addition to that, this was a late entry to the event. It wasn't a planned entry either, regardless of how little anybody's focused on that, because it was not. It, we were supposed to originally have five houses, five uh, five originals, and five uh, IPs. Yeah. And then this got added. So, man, props to them. Universal did really well. Jordan Peele, daps to you, brother. <laughs> this this one was a come come from behind Victor, and I enjoyed it greatly. That is awesome, man. I'm glad you enjoyed us. Now that is gonna do it for this hour long episode of East Jesus. versus West. <laughs> it was well needed. We have not talked to each other since like August, so. Yeah. Uh, it was well needed. Uh, you guys know how we feel about the event. Let us know in the comments what you guys felt about the event. Uh, whether you're from Orlando, Japan, there's even one in Japan, Singapore, um, and of course over here in the West Coast, Hollywood. So let us know your lineup list, uh, what you guys thought of the event overall, and we'll be reading through some of the comments and liking them, responding to them. And yeah, so yeah, thank you guys so much for the constant support of East versus West. Uh, we'll be back pretty soon to uh, East versus West, um, Bush Gardens, Hollow Scream versus Not Scary Farm because you know I've been to Not Scary Farm seven times and I can <laughs> guarantee you, I can tell you everything about that damn event. I'm having so much. I think this year that is my number one favorite haunt um, nice. around here because I've gone so many times. Like, a lot of the characters are noticing us and knowing us and following us on Instagram, which I think is fucking awesome. Um, That's cool. And, yeah, it's, it's given us the opportunity so much so that even next month when we relaunch the podcast in November, um, we're going to be doing what's called Scaractor Appreciation Month, where every week on the podcast we're going to have a different character from Not Scary Farm 
giving us their experiences at uh, Knott's and, you know, some funny stories, the work going into becoming the characters, the work going into just, you know, continuing with the event. Um, we're very excited to have a lot of the iconic characters going to be joining us on the podcast. Um, of course, some friends over at Fracture Compass will be here. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So definitely tune into that in November. The first week of November, we're going to drop our first podcast featuring Fractured Compass. I can promise you that one because we've already discussed that. Um, as the time goes on, we'll announce more of the characters. And uh, yeah, so be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for more East versus West. More content by your boys, the Knights of Horror. More content from your boy, Eddie Tainment. Absolutely. <sighs> Grinding. We're only halfway through the season, and your boy's exhausted. But I know, man. It feels like it's been forever already, man. Has, but... The season started super early this year. Yeah, and your boy's exhausted. Um, yeah. I'm surprised I got through this video. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, and we will see you guys next time.